Enzo will uh, will uh, present after Sam and uh, Sheila Edson about the Spanish uh, translation experience. And then we'll go to uh, with Yuri, uh, who is uh, representing here the sort of metadata packages translation effort. And uh, and then we'll have uh, Phil and myself uh, talking about more the workflow that we have put together, the potential next steps, and gathering your feedback for for improvement so that we better meet your needs. So. Sam, if you want to start. Okay, hello. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, my name is uh, Sam. So um, I'm with uh, HIPS Vietnam, but based in Laos. So uh, on behalf of the uh, HIPS Vietnam, I will also present the, the experience with the uh, Transifex for both Laos and uh, Vietnam. Okay, just a, uh, a bit of the context. So both for Lao and Vietnam. So the official language in Vietnam is the Vietnamese, and for Lao is also Lao. So, but English is also um, not really uh, common for the whole country. So mostly in the capital city, they will speak some English. Uh, not that everyone will will understand English, and then in the provincial or district level, that is very even rare that they can uh, understand English. Even the simple basic, especially in terms of the calendar. So it's also a challenge for them when they see the calendar in English so to identify uh, or to locate the, the month. And in terms of the, the characters, if you can see Vietnamese is kind of okay, it's a Latin based, so, but for Lao it's completely different. Now, before I go to, to the thing, in, in Laos and in Vietnam, we also have different instances of DHS2 and running in different versions. So as you know, to, when we translate, we also need to keep in mind to check if the translation will reflect in all the, the instances. And now the current status, so for us and also for uh, Vietnamese, so we right now we only translate not all that's a reason behind it for vietnamese we have like 70% uh, for lao is only 55% uh, and the reason because uh, to translate everything is also a challenge because in in, in english some word is very difficult to to translate in lao or vietnamese because to get the meaning we might need some uh, explanation we need a longer word uh, and it will be very difficult. So our strategy is we just focus on what the end user will use. So as you can see, most of the thing, only the end user that uh, people who need to use the system and also to interact with the system, that's where we will focus. And in terms of the maintenance, the admin, um, we just keep it in as English. Because in order to, to use that, you also need to uh, understand English. And for admins, for our team, or in, in, in Laos, it's also OK. So that's just the, the context. But what I would like to share in terms of the challenges when uh, dealing with Transifex, uh, everything is uh, OK, but there are main uh, challenges here. There are few, few, but I group it into two. So the first one, uh, I think, in many countries also have this issue is the lack of the context. Uh, context, because in Transifex you will see just the word, right? You know that this is this word is using in uh, this app, but when you translate, it's very difficult to link to to have the context. And even though we translate everything, we think we translate everything, but when uh, it um, get updated into the S2, is still some some missing there, and we don't know how to translate uh, those things. So for example, here I would like to show the filter. Um, we thought this is in data visualization. When we check in data visualization section, we try to to uh, search for that filter. It's not there. So uh, that's also the first challenge. We don't know uh, the exact location of the word. And then sometimes when we translate, it uh, uploaded, applied to DHSU, but then when we check, it's still uh, missing. And uh, the last one is also the ability to, to check on DHS2. 
you know, sometimes there are uh, the gaps, right? Because the team need to uh, apply to the wall file and then we need to, to download and then deploy to the production. And then it will also coming back to, to the first point that uh, once we, uh, once it's deployed and then we need to go back and check and also sometimes we see that it's not uh, uh, the word that we would like to to translate or we want to fix is, is not there. And I also see some in the document that uh, for automatic like pooling of the translation is about 20% changes and then you will get automatic. But for us sometimes we just need to to change some word that we see. And then sometimes then we need to uh, email Phil or Matthew like can you uh, 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 apply this to the wall file and then we wait and then to check again. So this is just uh, uh, some challenges that we have that we'd like to share. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. Um, I don't know if I don't know if my yeah. Okay. Thanks, uh, thanks, Sam. I think uh, that's uh, very insightful for us to get these, especially these challenges, uh, because uh, that's what we can uh, work on uh, in the next month and years to come. Um, and uh, I'm I'm pretty sure, yeah, that the lack of context is uh, is probably something that we'll uh, we'll yeah. hear more than once. Uh, <laughs> Uh, just uh, one one quick question before we go to the uh, to the to uh, Sheila and uh, Edson. Do you have dedicated people to translate, or how how is it uh, happening? Yep. Uh, yeah. For for our case, we don't have the a dedicated person to to translate. So we utilize uh, the implementer teams to translate. So yeah, sometimes it will also. Okay, cool. Thanks. So, Sheila and Edson, who wants to uh, to be on stage? Both of you. So, uh, Sheila and Edson are from uh, South Giditus, or East Mozambique, and uh, they will present their workflow and challenges and so on. Thank you, um, Matthew. My name is Sheila Andre. I'm from East Mozambique, um, coordinating some of activities regarding to the implementation team. Um, so sorry, we don't have like a presentation. It was to give uh, an insight on what we have been doing um, in terms of translating. Uh, since we started implementing DHS2 um, almost five, ten, 10 years ago, um, first, it was a challenge because uh, we know same as Laos and uh, Vietnam um, in our countries that speak Portuguese as uh, official language, we have also local language. Um, and uh, since DHS2 is being used more on local, uh, it's very difficult for them to understand um, English uh, basic words. So he had faced many challenge back on time because most of the platform were uh, in, in, in English. It was uh, a huge work to keep translating um, in different versions. And this actually is um, our biggest uh, issue because in the different countries that we are implementing the, the DHIS2, they also have the different versions of the the server and uh, we have to kind of um try to see how we we translate and uh keep on track on um, from the each uh country that are using very different uh very different versions of of the dhs2 uh what we did uh, to kind of um being close on and help each of this country was to uh, to prioritize um, uh, some of the aspects that they are using the most. For example, in Mozambique, they are using more uh, mobile or uh, the data entry. We were capturing and focus on only on those uh, on those 
strings and uh, we translate them um, and prioritize them. So for each country, we kind of did um, a mapping on which platforms or which uh, modules they are using the most. And we translate um, this every um, every version of the the the, the DHIS two, so uh, we can um, easily implement on the on the on the field. Um, in terms of apps, um, I will just turn to Edson so he can explain what uh, basically we did in terms of the the applications. Yeah. Hi everyone, my name is Edson, um, focal point of uh, web development, sorry, web development in Mozambique. So uh, in terms of, of custom maps, uh, we do the translation using the the library that uh, DJS2 uh, built, that one we call the I-89, uh, I-89. Uh, we're using this uh, library to translate the apps, the custom apps, because also we are facing these issues uh, about the 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 languages. Because uh, we are, you know, we are building the global apps. It's not use it, you just use it in Mozambique, uh, but it is 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 used uh, in another country. Uh, and the, for that thing, we are using this this one, this library, uh, I eighty nine. I eighteen N to to translate, but also we have a challenges because uh, this I eighteen uh, N uh, library we just translate the strings into the apps. Okay, let me explain it. Each of application have their translation words. You know. Uh, it's difficult to uh, share the translation between apps. You know that's the big problem because we, in all of them, we, ne we have to translate the same words. That's the big issue that we we are facing uh, in Mozambique. Sorry, uh, <laughs> in Mozambique because uh, we need to do the same things in each of each of each of uh, uh, apps that we are building. Uh, it would be very good if you have uh, uh, some some uh, uh, shared words that we already translated between our apps that we are developing. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, a lot of work to do. <laughs> Thanks for sharing. Okay, so uh, TGS obviously TGS to do it up by up and uh, to keep uh, track of all the versions and uh, replicate your translation effort uh, throughout the installed base of uh, DHIS2 instances in the in in the different countries you are intervening in. Uh, so that complements pretty well uh, what we've uh, heard from from some. So it's not only a matter of context; it's a matter of versions and. Uh, Access to uh, potentially some Transifex tools to to uh, facilitate the 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 workflow here. Um, after Laos and Vietnam and uh, Portuguese uh, language, let's uh, switch to the Spanish to the Latin America Spanish or full uh, Spanish across the globe. Well, the, it's great that you mentioned it because my first slide here, you would see a map, right? Where I would show you Latin America and I would show you all the different languages that are spoken in Latin America because uh, Latin America doesn't just speak Spanish. It speaks Portuguese. It speaks French. It speaks uh, Dutch randomly. Well, I don't know what they were doing there, but they were there. Uh, and of course, before all of these Europeans came up, came over with their ships burning stuff. Uh, there were a lot of other languages that were there. In Paraguay, Guarani is an official language. In Bolivia, there's a lot of official languages as well. So we cannot, when we talk about Latin America, we cannot speak about Spanish. We have to speak about usually multilingual instances, especially those instances that are happening at regional level. Uh, Pan American Health Organization has an instance for uh, vaccine prevention, uh, vaccine uh, surveillance, for example, pharmacovigilance. That one is used in English, Portuguese, Dutch, and Spanish, right? So we're not just thinking about translating DHS2 to the tar to one target language. We're thinking about multilingual instances 
were different users with a different locale. We had to interact with the metadata and the data in different ways. And that is something that needs to be considered. And that was much longer than I expected. But I... <laughs> um, um, <we> do, <laughs> I, I am the person that's in charge of getting it done. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Enzo. I am the coordinator for implementations in Latin America. And yeah, there's the map, you see. And then on this other side, I had this map that shows the proficient, the level of proficiency in English that you have in those countries, right? As you can see, the only one that has high proficiency in English is Argentina, highly questionable. I do not believe that for a minute. <laughs> Sorry, Pablo. Uh, and the rest are more moderate, etc. cetera. Uh, it is a challenge, right? Next slide, please. Uh, I absolutely love this quote, and I used to use it a lot working with Norwegian universities, making them use English in their communication. Uh, so the, a little bit the opposite of what I'm doing now. Uh, if I'm selling to you, I speak your language. If I'm buying, then you got to speak mine. Uh, and that is what's happening here. A lot of the time when I started this job, I would do the demos in English. That's it. We lost it. That project is never going to happen because the people sitting on the other side are seeing that in English. They do not understand the concepts of digital public goods that are flexible, modifiable, translatable. We lost them. Okay, so not only we're talking about translating something for a use case that's being implemented, we're talking about having a way to demonstrate that our software is already localized. And when we do not do that, we do not manage to bring DHST. So to me, that's the biggest challenge. Uh, in order for us to promote DHS2, we need to show that DHS2 is not a colonial good that's just coming and imposing the global language. Rather, it's a respectful good that is uh, working with what we are going towards. Right, next one. Uh, and I thought this presentation was for tomorrow, actually. I got confused. So I wrote it like a, 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 about an hour ago. First challenge is money and time. I've managed to get some money from the Pan American Health Organization to translate, but it's it's never enough. Uh, the translators, uh, the professional ones are expensive, of course. Uh, the non-professional ones are questionable. And our own developers, even, we all have our own bias on the different versions of Spanish that need to be used because there's not one Spanish either. There are dozens of ways you could speak Spanish. So that's an issue. New features that are not translatable. Okay. <laughs> so when we have a new feature, it's amazing. We're going to TransFX, doesn't exist. What happened? Oh, I forgot that I had to make sure that it was translatable. So part of the QA needs to ensure that if something is not translatable, then it's not done. That's not done. Something that cannot be translated is not done. And then that's different to the not being translated. That can we work with. If something's not translated, but it can be translatable, that can we can work with. But then where in the cycle is it translated? Because when something gets released, I get the countries excited. It's coming in the next version. Yes. Oh, no, it's not translated. We've got to wait till the next release because otherwise it's not going to sync with TransFX. And that's a massive issue. Okay. Multilingual uh, new features are only tested in English from what I can see. Developers are not testing in other languages. Uh, and therefore, uh, a lot of stuff comes up only when you're using it. Our play instance is only in English. So whenever there is an issue with a translation that I have to demonstrate in a bug, I have to translate all the metadata that's going to get erased tonight, so it's not even going to stay there forever. Uh, to make a Jira, I give up. I'm just, I'm just not reporting this. This is too much work. Um, yes. And another issue is the lack of use case based translation. An org unit, an enrollment, et cetera, that makes, doesn't make sense. And it's very hard to find the generic word that not only works across domains, but it also works across versions of Spanish where it might have very different connotations. Now, next one. Uh, I'm sorry for so many challenges. Those were the easier ones to write because those I've heard many times. <laughs> lots of custom forms. That's a problem in itself. We should not be using custom forms, but there's lots of things that simply we do not have functionality in what we already have. We have a very, we don't have a standard way of doing it. Um, we have ended up with the most standardized method for doing those is essentially using an option set that has all the translations, one for each locale, one option for each issue. And then we have a script that pulls it up, uses the locale of the user and brings it in. That's been the one that's caused the least pain when it comes to maintaining it. It causes other pains like performance, uh, but there's some trade-offs and 
some benefits from it, but at least you have it all in one place, right? You can download something that's easy, simple, and then you can just pull it from that. There are lots of untranslatable elements within, well, tracker capture is not going to be used, but there are some of those still in, in, in capture and over everywhere there are untranslatable elements, which means that you have to translate everything, but that one is hard coded. And if you, if you don't change the metadata, you're a bit stuck. So later in the show, we've ended up doing something like vaccine, vaccinatia, vaccination, right? And just having all of the different ones in one, one string, which is fine when it's one word, terrible when there's like 10 words in that term. Yep. Uh, and there's no option to export translations in a user-friendly format from the instance. So someone can look at it and be like, yep, that makes sense and verify it. Or maybe there are. So let me know if you found one. <laughs> Next one, please. Uh, context. I think we already talked about context. In this case in particular, I got actually got a screenshot, so I included it. Uh, all of those are uh, options from the translations app, which few people use, but if you're going to do one punctual translation, it's pretty quick and easy. But then we don't know what option set that's from. So you don't know exactly if there's many things with the same name, how are you going to know what you're translating? Same with data elements, similar in TransFX. You don't know what program stages that element is. If there's five with similar names, it's very, very difficult. Next. Uh, yeah, that's already, I already told you. Asking Pao for money. Thank you, Pao, when you give us money to translate things. Uh, but yeah, doing something like that for the non-translatable elements, that's been our solution. But it's it's not pretty, of course. Uh, and yeah, and uh, Marco and Pajo have written a, 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 a little document on how they do the whole uh, option set translations for custom forms. So maybe you guys can, can look at it later. Yeah, next. Lessons learned. Uh, custom configuration is hard, obviously. Yeah, maintaining static translations in hard-coded it somewhere is not sustainable. It's impossible. Uh, okay, that's, this is very dumb. <laughs> let's, let's skip that one. Obviously, we need to configure the language settings on the platform properly. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, and there's some need to handle constants for values that are repeated throughout the instance. So like, if you have one thing, we end up finding that throughout different programs, the same concept gets translated differently because it's pulling from different sources. So like having a metadata dictionary somewhere that we can pull in to use the translations would be marvelous. Uh, yeah. Like I said, I prepared this like an hour ago. Uh, and that's it. That's everything. Anything to add, the uh, LATAM team that I've forgotten? No? Okay. No, microphone. I just wanted to say it's working. Um, that actually all the translation, like we can by system work with the actual memory. That's what you are mentioning about the that you should have like a database. Sure, and I guess it was a bit difficult to know what I was talking about translating the core of the HS2 and what I was when I was talking about translating metadata, right? Because those are different things, different processes, different approaches, but I hope this will give you some. The main thing that I would like to, the devs to take with them, Jan, there you are. Uh, if it's not translatable, it's not done. If it's not translated, it's barely done because we, we cannot use it. And if there's not a process in the, you know, in the release cycle to translate before it's released then we are in trouble and we have to uh, make a lot of compromises so we will appreciate uh, some help there thank you thank you i'm actually glad that you just had one hour to prepare <laughs> we asked for this pain but uh, yeah we're actually here to to get as many challenges as possible right so thanks for all to, for being uh, uh so so critical here i think that uh, that will in, improve our workflows and and set of tools talking about translation memory uh phil will uh, will talk about that uh, at the, at a later later stage uh right after maybe yuri you want to take uh, to have to give us a few words on metadata? You don't want. Uh, towards the end, okay. 
Austin, is there something that you wanted to uh, to share with us in terms of uh, after this? Let's go for you, Phil. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? So, uh, yeah, I'm Phil. Uh, I oversee a lot of the operations and the releases and many of the processes that are involved here. And um, so, sorry, I'm just going to try and get this. Uh, it's working. So we wanted to really uh, have a bit of an interactive session and hear from you guys and and share what we're doing and yeah, kind of discuss problems and think about that. So I prepared a few slides just in a way initially as as talking points um, that we can that we can go over and share. And I don't, I'm not really sure the best way to go this go through this. I think if I just go through some of these these few slides that I have, they cover a few of these points, and I think we can start to answer even some of the the issues that that have been raised already. Um, I've also got a few slides that I consider a kind of appendix, which is just talks about the current processes um, and then, and what we do there, so that just to share again the the understanding of uh, some things because I think. Our documentation is not always great. Our processes are sometimes a bit hidden. You may be unsure about when and how uh, translations go in to the system and, and so on. So I think that might help to clarify and sort of set the stage for, for further discussions. So firstly, um, a kind of few, a few tips and tricks, really. Um, for for those of you who are involved in translations, so we we have um, some processes to support you, as as I'm sure you're all aware. And um, I wanted to try and demonstrate a couple of things. So, firstly, we have some some content material that is there to help you find uh, the things that you want to translate the starters. So uh, when it comes to interface translations, for example, uh, you can go to our website to this localization uh, page. I want to try and go to that now. So I'm going to try and uh, try and open that up and share my, my screen. Yes. Just bear with me. Okay, so so I have to share. Yes. Things around here. There we go. Okay, so if you follow that localization link, um, you can find it this just by searching on our website as well. Basically, on this. Um, this page, we have an overview that we try and keep up to date. I notice in preparing this, we don't have version 41. Um, but basically, the idea of this is that for all of the languages we support in the UI, um, we show the amount of uh, the coverage of the translations we have uh, in the different versions. Um, and you can actually you can click on this, and it will take you to a breakdown of that uh, language and that version. You can also go straight to here and, and choose the, the language and version. But as I say, so you can choose something here and you can say, you know, why is this at 40%? And you can actually see that some of these components are at uh, you know, 100%, some are less, and, and so on. Many of you maybe know this, I, I'm not sure, but uh, I thought it's kind of useful reminder that. Uh, this can help you get into the system, and we've got these links that actually take you to uh, the Transifex platform in order to go ahead and, and kind of improve on these resources. So if you wanted to uh, work on the, the Dutch um, on data approval, uh, you click on uh, this link, and if you're logged into Transifex, you get taken immediately to to that resource um, and language combination and so on. 
Uh, so I'm getting confused with my slides now. Um, let me go back to here. Hopefully you can all still see the slide now. Have I switched between this here? Um, yeah, so that was uh, for the UI. It's kind of a quick way in. The documentation is even more hidden um, because we, this is something we've more used internally. Um, but for the, the few languages that uh, uh, that we translate uh, the documentation into, uh, they have this this uh, file that's generated as part of the the uh, document generation, and it goes it's served with the documentation, and it does a kind of similar thing. So it's like the full breakdown of the documentation and the coverage. So each each one of these kind of leaves here is a page of the documentation, and you can um, you can actually see where things still need translation for for this this language in this case French. So it's quite a useful way of seeing um, you know which which areas of the documentation because it's kind of also aggregated um, up. Yeah, I forget because it's. We've got this uh, 419, right? Yeah, because, sorry. So the this is the language code of the, the, the Spanish uh, locale that we've got on the documentation. So that's that's already there. If you go to the home of the Spanish documentation, you'd see that. If you add this translate.html, you'd start to see these um, these bits. So th these are just a couple of tips of how to even find what you might want to or need to uh, translate. The next was about um, adding translations. So yeah, two things really taking advantage of uh, machine translations that we have um, built into the Transifex platform. And uh, yeah, using making use of the glossary, which can be quite a powerful tool to make sure that you um, have these kind of domain specific uh, uh, ways of translating when you know there are different ways of saying things. So it's it's not quite doesn't cover the the issue of context, but to some extent the the sort of domain specific uh, language can be kept in the glossary. And the machine translation uh, system actually uh, takes that into account in uh, in its updates. So yeah, if we go back to the sorry, excuse me, uh, wait, sorry. I can't see things here. I need to go back to Transifex. Oh, sorry, I've lost my window. Um, I can't click on it for some reason. Well, this is very strange. I'm going to have to stop sharing, I think, because it's... <laughs> I don't know what's going on. I'm I'm on this I'm sharing this window but I can't actually click on it to do anything. Yeah, I can't click on the stop sheet. Looks Apologies. like it's the internet which is down. So let's see if um, my kick up. Oh, sorry, someone had a an idea. The Zoom. So basically, while while um, Bill is trying to fix this, um, something really weird. We, we basically have um, 
So Transifex remains our hub for translating as I take this away uh, and sharing uh, sharing the translation load, right? So want to so talk? We can stop sharing. Yes, go ahead. Uh, no, uh, your back field. Uh, jump in. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Uh, with the uh, with the glossary, I think uh, I was just uh, uh, recently translating the platform or updating the translations into to Russian, and then uh, for a new implementation. And uh, a few things that I came across that would be great. Uh, and I, I think this is come in a way coming with the you know development of DHS to itself. Is uh, we are looking at the model of how we are branding how we're you know marketing the, the the individual products within the apps and uh, it started when i think when we were translating into norwegian and we were all thinking how do you translate track and capture and we had a long meeting on what do we what we do with that and the, the best solution was to keep the track capture as 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 is uh and i had the same conversation but with myself uh when i was translating into russian i said how do you translate capture and I kept it capture. I've changed, uh, you know, App Hub into more meaningful name. But I think that we should uh, not let the community decide what they do, but maybe advise on how we keep that. And I think that it's very, e it, it's fine to keep capture, capture, and uh, uh, but then what do we do with data entry? Because it, it, it's good and a meaningful name, but it's not a good name for a product like Microsoft Word. Uh, so I think maybe more decision-making on the product side should be made about what uh, these uh, apps should be called and how we keep those names. And for now, what I have done is that I have created um, Transifex, the glossary uh, um, entries to make sure that whenever you see the word capture that it will translate it or keep it as capture in the in uh in the translation as well similarly for dashboard and because th that can change and uh i think more work can be done with that and the, another th uh, quest, uh comment i had on contextualizing uh the the translations and that specifically for for user interface uh i, I think you know, this is a call for 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 the platform side or for the developers to maybe utilize the context a little bit more when they create when these strings are created, uh, so that uh, adding descriptions or pulling where uh, this information comes from. Uh, what I have been doing is I was contacting the team and they were sending me screenshots with where those strings appeared and then I added them to Transifex and tagged so this could be utilized not only for that specific language but for uh, for all the other languages as well. But I think uh, Phil is going to talk about even better solutions soon. <laughs> so, and uh, I think that on our side we should also uh, review and harmonize a bit the naming of the strings for different apps because even uh translating let's say the capture app or the you know some other products i came across some sentences that i knew they meant the same but because they were added at different times they were different and therefore could be a possible uh, cause of for, for confusion so but th these are the comments maybe to back to us but uh some uh, recommendations for communities as well as just also to really use the Transifex features to make your translations more uh, productive with adding context when you find it, use the glossary, uh, use machine translation. I, I'm really uh, advocating for using machine translation because I'll give you an example. I, doing a training, let's say in, in Russian, and then having that one button which is not translated uh and people say well, what is this and you say well, it if it may if it was in russian but made no sense it would be much easier to deal with it uh because you would have this kind of effect uh made in china instruction <laughs> but but uh having it in another language it it, it, it makes per the person think it's an error somewhere and then they they get confused so Yes. Yeah.
<laughs> Thanks. I think that you are talking quite uh, interesting issue that actually we we were hoping to uh, to go through uh, through as well. So uh, and and on top of machine translation, I would uh, obviously recommend the use of. Um, uh, uh, translation memory as well, so and recommendation that uh, comes with tran Transifex. But yeah, go ahead. Yes, uh, yeah, thanks, thanks, Yuri. And uh, I think we cover some of these these things uh, now. But like the the point about the naming of the apps is like an in, an interesting one that uh, is kind of not always uh, considered. Um, mm. Yes, I wanted to. Um, yeah, just to show about the machine translation. So once you're a, a translator on this platform um, and you go into a resource, so you can, in principle, do this for already translated strings, but there's a bit of a danger there, right? So we 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 generally encourage people to only apply this uh, to untranslated um, strings, which you can easily filter uh, in this view. But we've got these bulk uh, changes that you can apply. Um, so this is um, for the capture app in this case. I'm not going to actually apply things because it applies them immediately as, uh, when you do it in bulk. So when you do it individually, you can get a machine translation. I could pick one of these things. There's a machine translation button. It uses this deep L uh, uh, service. And, uh, and then you can you know, save that if you if you approve of it. But obviously, that takes a bit of time. And a quick way is to find all the untranslated, select all, and you can get this machine translation option. And you can click in it, and we'll fill them all, and then you can uh, scan down quite quickly and review and see if there's anything that's uh, really amiss. But it it becomes a very quick way of of making updates uh, across uh, uh, entire apps. Once you found them using the previous uh, trick of getting to the app, one thing I would uh, mention here is the machine trans. Uh, sorry, is the translation memory, which uh, some other people mentioned. Um, so where we have different versions of a given app, um, you can't see it in this view, but uh, I go back to the resources. We typically have a resource um, per version. We're moving a bit away from this with. Uh, the, what we call the continuous delivery apps, because the apps can, um, so the same app version can support multiple versions of the uh, the core. Uh, but there's still some extent uh, that we have uh, uh, different versions. You want to? Yeah, we have a question. Sure. Question coming. When the versions change, a lot of times the same strings that were previously translated that are identical show up as untranslated. Is there a reason for that in particular? That shouldn't be the case. Um, if the strings are identical, the translation memory should uh, fill those in. And I was going to say, sort of co conversely, if you want to add translations, we are always encouraged to add them to the master. Because typically, and it's not always the case, but typically that will be like the super set and the, the lower versions will have kind of the subsets, the less of the same words. So if you fill 100% of the master, you usually get, you know, the full coverage of the earlier ones. Um, if, you, if you were to look at that uh, uh, table that you get on the, on the website, you see that the lower versions typically have higher coverage, that's because the higher versions have either new or additional uh, words, uh, more often than not. But uh, yeah, I mean, if we have things like this, we have to look into why that's the case, um, Enzo, because we should, if, if the string is the same, the translation memory should fill it in automatically. And at the moment, this, um, this is linked also uh, with the, the context question, I think. Um, so. I go back. Yeah, we're back to this screen. Um, so the Transifex platform does support context. And um, we know that this is an issue uh, for, for words with different meanings in different uh, uh, environments or different situations. Um, someone has a hand up on the 
the call. I don't know whether we, if anyone's following these the questions there. Um, let me just uh, continue here, though. So, yeah, the maybe I need to go back to Transfix, but basically it supports um, string sort of text where you can describe context, um, and it supports screenshots where you can really see the page. Uh, that happens, but it's that's more of a manual process at the moment. If we want to add screenshots, we have a few examples in the in the tool. Strings are something that we can could add programmatically. The 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 files that we use in the source do support context as well. But again, it's a challenge to find out. You know, what do you put in there? Is it a really manual thing that the developer adds some sort of context around it? Can we pull out the context? in a smart way just from you know where it is in the code can we somehow highlight that um, I think there are some some challenges there but we certainly haven't been able to leverage it um, so far and we we know it's problems that we need to solve uh, solve something there to at least add some uh, some sort of categorization or context to the to the the strings to help and we can also set trans effects so that it takes that into account right um, or not for different uh, apps so on a, on a application basis we can choose whether it needs to be exactly the same context as well as the same string before it will make use of the translation memory um, okay so yes in the chat we have some questions about trans effects how much time it usually takes for a translation to go to release version after submitting it in Transifex? Are there any limitations? I provided six translations, but now I'm not able to do it anymore. The button is great and unactive. I'm not aware of limitations. Um, as a translator, you should be able to translate any uh, translated or untranslated uh, strings. Once they're reviewed, Someone with just translation privileges shouldn't be able to change it. Um, so, yeah, so when you are, as a translator, when you have, uh, when you are part of the pool of translators within an organization, which is HISPIO in our case, then you have access to all the projects, right? For a specific language or for a pool of languages, depending on the and uh, where 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 you are you are but uh, <clears throat> you 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 can have a restriction in terms of project depending again on the sort of teams that we we, we can uh, we can set up but as far as strings are concerned that's exactly what Phil was saying we i mean it depends on um, on the stage of the string so if a string is not translated or is flagged as translated a translator can still translate and, and translate even over something that is already existing as soon as it's reviewed then obviously uh, uh, users with translator rights cannot overwrite a, uh, a, a string that has been flagged as reviewed you need to have higher higher access rights such as reviewer right so um but yeah yeah and for the for the first question how much time it takes i'm going to skip forward to um to my appendix my process so for ui translations um we synchronize whatever's in transifex on a weekly basis we used to do this on a daily basis, um, but with the way we actually um, publish our apps now, that would actually result in apps being published um, almost on a daily basis or whenever there were translations, and that causes an extra kind of overhead for the team. So we, we've uh, limited to weekly, which is still pretty fast, I think, turnaround. Um, what happens is the... You know, any changes to the strings that are in the code get, get pushed to Transifex. Um, on that platform, people uh, translate the, their languages and the, those strings. Then on this weekly basis, those uh, translations are pulled back into the code base. And they'll immediately be built, be built um, as part of the development build for that version. 
So you can either get hold of that development build or look on uh, our play uh, servers where you can play about and you should be able to see those things uh, usually from the Monday after uh, you made the changes in Transifex. And then they will also be in the next patch release. So then it depends um, about how far away that patch release is. And for any version, it's usually two to three uh, months away maximum. Uh, but it can be obviously a lot sooner. That's yeah, very good point. So yeah, point made by Austin there is, is that this is yeah, that's the that's when the translations will be bundled into core with that app. But again, because of the the nature of apps being released uh, in their own life cycles, um, that app, if it's a continuous delivery app, that change that went through at the weekend may be out as a new version of the app on that Monday uh, as a production version. So the, this continuous delivery of apps really also supports uh, a much quicker uh, way to deliver translations as, uh, in addition to fixes and, and so on. So yeah, so it's, it's quite a simple um, uh, approach. Um, and I, I mentioned before that we should uh, ideally target the master version in Transfex to take advantage of translation memory. Quick question, Phil. Yeah. Is it the same for documentation and for metadata? How does that um, work? <laughs> Next, database translations or metadata translations. So, you know, I, I think as you all know, your metadata is your responsibility generally. Um, you know, and but there aren't a lot of good supporting tools. Uh, around there's the translation app built into DHS2. It's uh, but it's quite cumbersome if you wanted to translate everything through that. You can also do it through some of the the right click options um, uh, and so on. But it's not so easy. It's better to try and link it with a um, a system like the Transfax platform. We actually use it for the the toolkits, um, so the packages that are developed by uh, the core team. We uh, push those into Transfex, and there you again. It's the same system. It's used. Synchronizations are done. That's more of a. There are processes, uh, but the, the timing is is more controlled by the team who want to produce these packages. So they do it before the packages are produced. But we actually have some tooling that helps to support this. It can pull uh, translations out from an instance, um, all of the translatable objects, and it can push them into. Uh, Transifex, I think it would be good if we can could also uh, export it into other forms that might be easy for people to work with, um, like spreadsheet kind of forms. That's an idea. Um, and it can then take the changes um, at the moment from Transifex, it will pull the translations, and it can inject those back into an instance. Or it can work with the packages directly, so it can pull the translations out and swap, swap back in. Yeah, uh, we have a question from uh, Enzo. I was just going to mention that the flat file tool that some implementers have running around does something similar to that, but it's still quite cumbersome if you're working with more than one language. Yeah. So I think I think we could explore ways to to leverage some of the sort of tooling and extend it and maybe share uh, some of these things. So, so we use it quite successfully internally, um, and it's useful with the Transifex. Transfex platform, but um, it could be yeah, just a tweak to work with other other platforms too. It can also be used for language swapping, which is one of the ways we get around the fact that some things can't be uh, translatable. So language swapping is where we would take, for example, one of these toolkit packages, um, and you we would swap. Um, let's say the yeah, so it would be an English base with like a French translation, we'd swap it around so that the base translation is French, and you would select English as a as an option, and that means then you can use, uh, you can set the name to those untranslatable things in in certain cases or whatever field it is um, in the local language. But there are limitations, but it, it actually it fixes some of this problem for some implementations. Question. Yes, a question from yeah, Mohammed. Just a question on Arabic language. So, you know, the right to left issue uh, when it comes to the 
using the Arabic language. Mm -hmm. So uh, any update? I, I know yeah, there is an effort about that, but it's really, we start some efforts on the documentation and already it's published on there, not all documentation, but still we have some challenges on that. And uh, maybe uh, I, I will not say challenge, but some words that uh, replicate, uh, repeated. So maybe some validation on the repeated words uh, or some validation. And for example, in Arabic, uh, I'll give for example on delete, cancel, free, uh, remove. Okay. So the, uh, the four bottoms or these four data elements, uh, some Arabic we will maybe all and kind of, they can use one term for all yep. this four. Mm. So if that's happened, is there any validation just or to make the tool more smart? Okay. How you say that cancel means X, but in another row, cancel means uh, Y. So the tool should maybe notify, okay, in, 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 in another place you mention this, and then you mention another tra uh, translation. So yeah. is there any like hard validation on that? I think the, the quick answer is no. I think it relates to some of the things that Yuri was uh, talking about. He's, uh, he's seen similar cases. Yeah, do you want to comment? I think uh, Mohammed, it's a, it's a good question, but I think that's not the question to the to the platform to the TransFX, but to the to how yeah you manage the translations, and I think contextualizing the translation uh, is one of the things, and then uh, it is it uh, the platform would allow you to translate different words with one term if if it's fine, but uh, but that is oh, you know. If you are reporting that as a problem, then maybe you should find a way to label your uh, Arabic terms so that it would be understandable. What it... Yes, yes, yes. Uh, and I had. I don't know. I think you know this. It's it's very hard to kind of programmatically find these kind of issues, right? Um, you could have certain. Um, uh, patterns that you look for and certain lists of words that you would look for maybe but I, I can't you know think of a very easy way to do it without human interaction on on many of these cases and without having context as, as another way of kind of working around it I had a comment about the metadata and I think it's maybe a good moment since you mentioned uh, we started talking about these metadata toolkits so yes we do have a specific project on the on trans effects where uh, the the generic toolkits that we develop get a place and the, where they can get be translated and if you have need to translate it in your language or to 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 uh, adjust the translations or to create a variant of an existing language and then uh, ad adapt it uh, please reach out because that's where we can guide you on how to do this in TransFX and uh, give you the the files. But uh, since this is a discussion, I, I think it's good to post this question to to the to the to the history of the community. So when you use the uh, any kind of uh, um, packages on in your instances, do you ever use translations or do you swap? Do you use that swap? What Phil was talking about, where you use your language as the baseline language of the metadata, because I would like to know that and. I know from some implementers, but not from from the ma ma majority of the community. So, how do you handle it? Maybe someone here has an example, or someone in the chat can post what they do uh, with the metadata. It would be interesting to see because th that can help us understand how we can deliver this best to you. Yeah, actually, I can answer a bit of that about, well, I'm from Pajo, by the way, uh, then we have everything. Um, well, at Pajo level, we try to use English as the base language for like the names, we could say, and then translate everything. Mm -hmm. But it's still, when you go to a country that has their own implementation, most of the time they use Spanish as the base one. Um, then we need to manage everything. Um, not only English, but you're going to find everything that you can imagine. Spanglish, I would say, is the official. 
Thanks. Do we have uh, any other feedback from the community? The community, but just to answer Yuri, like, you know, from the toolkit one, we need to translate, for example, the HIV toolkit, we swap the baseline, but mainly to, because we know the current limitations we have uh, regarding translation, so we need to, to swap the baseline of the package. Yeah. Okay, interesting. Yeah. Um, uh, on the right to left, I'm not an expert on that area. I not have don't have a full overview. I don't know. Uh, I was hoping Mozafar would be available for this, but because uh, he's one of our experts, I don't know whether you uh, could say anything, Austin, to to the <laughs> yeah yeah platform support. Yeah, I know we've done quite a bit of work to support right to left, and particularly in 41, there's some improvements to the right to left support in the platform itself um, and different applications. Um, obviously, that's uh, right to left for text. There's also the interpolation of uh, English strings into that text, which can be complicated in, in a right to left language because if you're reading right to left and then you sometimes you have a, a name or something that is in, in Latin characters and you have to represent that. Um, so there were some challenges with that in the past that I believe we've addressed now. Um, but also the, the interface elements, we're trying to work on in, uh, improving the way we use CSS to uh, lay things out from right to left as well as not just text but also like the the sidebar should be on the right side instead of on the left side and it should should flow uh, in that direction as well um, so that a lot of that is improved in 41 and will continue to improve uh, as well um, that's something we've been been working on quite a bit recently Over. great thanks thanks for the clarification Austin. Okay, I've just been told that we're running short on time, so I'm going to try and <laughs> speed up a little bit. Um, one last thing I wanted to say on DB translations is that uh, one, of the, one of the current limitations and the challenges is the actual interface for adding these locales into the system because you have to have them in the system right to be able to select them. Um, we're aware that this is problematic. Um, it limits to the way you can add them. There are certain workarounds you can do if you have access to the database. You can actually just change it to kind of look how how you want, and you can add your uh, uh, locales that way. So we can support with that, but it requires this access. So ideally, we will be improving that to make it give a bit more control through the interface. Um, yes, uh, the other we have another point here about uh, documentation. There, we also do a kind of weekly synchronization. Um, when we build, we build our documentation daily for the English version, and we push the the strings to the platform. Uh, Transifex, and then uh, on a weekly basis, we build the localized versions, and there we pull the strings from uh, Transifex for those localized versions. Um, so that means that, yeah, if you update things for the documentation, you usually see that uh, on the following Monday. We had this uh, long time problem that small changes in the documentation, maybe a typo correction, a change of the space, changes that whole string for maybe a a huge paragraph, and that breaks the translation, and then it suddenly appears in English in something that was already translated. Um, it's quite hard to solve this problem, but we've we've put in place something. I think it was the end of last year, beginning of this year. Uh, we put in a kind of caching solution. So once a once a page uh, from the documentation reaches 100% translation, it will be stored um, somewhere, and we will try and pull from that store uh, before we try and pull from. Uh, Transifex when we build the localized documentation. So that means once it hits 100%, if it then goes below 100%, none of those changes will get reflected in the localized documentation until it reaches 100% again and replaces the, the previous 100%. Um, it means obviously translations are a bit slower to get in on the localized versions, but it, we think it's a, the trade off of having consistent uh, translated pages is probably worth it, but there's a question on that maybe. Comment. Yeah, I would say that is mostly a comment. Um, but is um, an issue that is raised uh, oftenly is that uh, most people look for help that should reach the documentation. I mean, uh, in Google and in other languages, probably you need a bit of SEO for because most of the links that are available when you are looking for something in other language are broken then it takes you back to the home, not to the actual answer or the 
where the documentation should take you. I mean, mm -hmm. that works in English, but not in Spanish or in Portuguese. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think we it's something that should work, so it's something that we we need to fix, yeah. Okay. Um, I want to jump back to one thing where I had this slide, because uh, we're, we've only got a few minutes, and I wanted to try and... I think these are potential exciting areas that we could uh, move into, that we're, we're starting to discuss internally, that, that could maybe fix some of the problems, not all of the problems that we've discussed. One, uh, one area is uh, the concept of translation packages. So this is where we would want to um, decouple the localization files from the, the, the code and the apps and the build uh, system so that you could then um, bring in new translations without an update, for example, to the, to the sort of functional update to the app. Um, you could customize in principle because they live outside of the sort of app space, so you could edit them yourself for your own environment. Um, and of course, you could share those kind of changes either back as defaults for the, the system or to other um, uh, implementations. Um, obviously, this would require some sort of management uh, uh, after a while in order to, to do this. But we think that's a potentially kind of uh, uh, exciting area to explore. <laughs> yeah. Um, other ideas are things like uh, in situ translations. Um, so again, this is like how do we deal with the concept of uh, the context issue? Um, this is something that uh, Austin was kind of uh, putting forward uh, recently. I think also uh, Matthew, if you could go to the system and where you see a problem with a translated or not translated uh, label or something. If you could go into a mode where you click that label and put your translation in, um, and that gets fed either back to you know the central uh, platform or to one of these uh, translation packages um, locally, for example, um, these are ideas which we think we'd really like to explore, and we think could be really powerful and really help people customize and get over some of the 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 yeah the barriers for for getting translations into their system because it puts it a bit more in your control i think and uh yeah uh, we think it, that could be a really helpful way of doing it obviously we wouldn't want to do everything in situ and walk through the whole thing but you could take advantage of a bit of both with like bulk uh machine translations in transifex you get that and then you kind of fill in gaps as you find them in the system we think that would be quite a nice uh, solution um yeah and DB translation tools. This is just like uh, I think I mentioned it. If we could explore um, sharing or um, extending tools that we use um, to help kind of manage uh, database translation and share things like translation memory, that was one of the things I think was mentioned here. We have quite a big translation memory from the uh, toolkit packages. Um, they might be a bit specific, but sometimes there are overlaps. Which you know, why can't we take advantage of that across the community? Anyway, wanted to touch on those things because I think there could be. I thought it could lead into some nice discussions, but we're a bit out of time, unfortunately. Last comment for any of you guys. Uh, I just want to, you know, I started clubbing because, and, and we had this discussion before the, the, the presentation, but the, the coupling localization files from build and allowing mm -hmm. these kind of translation skins or packages to, to be able to be added to the platform, I think this was resolve not only the translation uh, uh, issues and demand, but will also open up for use cases. And I know one that you've mentioned already, you know, we have some labels that are very generic, but then very specific requirements for, you know, enrollment date, incident date, event, the enrollment as such, but have building a skin on top of that would solve so, oh, open up so many use cases and I don't know, education, agriculture, uh, climate. And I think that would be definitely a way uh, forward. And the, and having a shared space for these, you know, localization packages would be uh, a great, great beginning. So th th absolutely. Yeah, that's, that's a really good point that, that you can cover domain specific things as well. So it's not just you could, uh, you could still have English, but English for this agriculture domain or something. So different words and things, yeah. 
English French, it can be English English as well. So, no, or not English at all. Austin. <laughs> I will, I will just say on that point that there it's, it's not the same as translation. It's not the same as translation packs, but in 41, there is support for program specific terminology uh, for a number of those types of terms. Um, so registering org unit doesn't make a lot of sense in many cases, but you might want to call it a school in a certain program or something like that. Um, so there are some uh, new features in 41 and, and some of those were in 40 as well, both in capture and in uh, Android capture um, for basically, and, and that's also different than a translation pack because it's not, it's not universal, right? It might be uh, an incident date in one program and an event date in another program or something like that. Um, so really being able to customize not only the, the sort of skinning the application for the entire instance, but also per program um, is something that is a little bit beyond the pure translation. It's, it's also sort of domain contextualization. But that has uh, support for that has been improved in in forty one as well. Over. Thanks, Austin. And uh, yeah, I'll leave it on this slide to give you something to think about. But thank you, everyone. Appreciate uh, your thank you. time.